Hi everyone, Nathani Close Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Crying album, F Fleeting the... Ugh, I, this album cover. These guys are a purchase New York trio, making their full-length debut on uh, Run For Cover Records. Last time I heard these guys, it was on their Get Old Second Wind compilation that had dropped on the same label, which was a little rough around the edges, but the band had brought together uh, an interesting blend of rock and pop styles and topped it with these chiptune flavored synthesizers that uh, were pretty surprising. Now, sadly, on this new record over here, they seem to have dropped those particular synth patches, so uh, anybody who was hardcore into these guys for uh, maybe in a very cursory way having something to do with chiptune music, uh, you might be a little disappointed. But in my opinion, the band is sounding more diverse than ever, and uh, better than ever, too, on this LP. There are elements of power pop on this record and very sweet, melodic twee. Every once in a while, some very intense and intricate and very technical rhythm guitars and heroic guitar solos pop in to sort of color things, shake things up. Experimental indie outfits like Deerhoof seem to be a strong point of reference. Groups that they're odd, they have sort of a weird streak to them, and they're obviously a, an underground band with kind of a, a lo-fi recording finish, but they're very good, strong, muscular players with a ton of talent. I think Japanese rock and pop is a reference point for these guys as well, as the song Origin sounds like the type of rock tune that you could hear soundtracking the intro of a, of a really popular anime series where all the characters are running at top speed to a particular point as the credits roll and flash on the screen. So again, the production on this thing, kind of lo-fi, rough around the edges, but the performances, monstrously tight and impressive. And on top of it, the writing on these tracks is super detailed. The band manages to pull off sounding endearingly amateurish and righteously virtuous at the same time. Like the syncopated drums and guitars that blast the album open on the opening track, which eventually give way to some solid verses accented by these really fast synth arpeggios. There's just so much going on instrumentally for a band of this sound. And there's super dynamic too, like the way the band pulls off sounding cute and dreamy at the intro of the song Wool in the Wash, and then eventually turns full prog pop for a flash with impressive drum fills and layered vocals exploding into this brittle sort of lo-fi orgasm. And over the bridge there's an awesome dueling guitar and synth solo that sounds like something off of a Boston record. The mood on these songs is super infectious too, like so joyous, so uplifting. I mean, the band is named Crying, uh, Crying Tears of Joy, dude. There's so much going on in these tracks, but what really pulls a lot of these songs together, the glue that holds them together in a lot of ways, are uh, Eliza Santos's vocals. They're not as flashy as everything else, sure, and uh, if you catch them live, you might hear her singing off-key or just uh, with a very odd inflection. Her vocals are modest, to say the least, but her very pretty, easygoing melodies make sense of the instrumental mayhem swirling around her at a hundred miles an hour. If her singing was as wild and as eccentric as everything else in the mix, making heads or tails of Crying's music would be kind of difficult, and their sharp pop appeal would go straight down the drain. I do wish, though, that she didn't sound as emotionally flat as she does sometimes, and that the chaotic mix on this record favored her voice a little bit more. Still, as is, I think the mix on this thing does get Crying's musical points across. At the midpoint on the record, the band shows that they can effectively play it off very smooth and blissful without turning bland in the process on the song Well and Spring. The song features all these beautiful wintry guitars and synthesizers. The track Children of the Wind toward the back end of the record is a very beautiful ballad too. But a majority of the second half of this record, it's progressive, power pop barn burners with tons of great guitar work, like on the track Revive or A Sudden Go Go Ghost. The song There Was a Door is one of the oddest tracks in the track listing, features this funky Jackson 5 inspired intro, eventually a jump the fuck up riff, which is complemented with these synth arpeggios, and Eliza sounding like she is uh, rapping on the track a little bit, uh, again, with her uh, very low level of emotion, but are all the same, rapping. And what sounds like DJ cuts have uh, made their way here and there in the track, sort of bringing the band in and out of certain sections of the song, or sort of accenting things a little bit every bar or so. And somehow this wild mix of 
pop and indie and uh, synth music and even rap don't come together into this super corny, cringy pile of crap. Now, I should probably mention the band manages to pack all of these ideas into just 35 minutes and 10 tracks. They're really not wearing on anybody's patience here, and each song on this thing is so dense that you're gonna wanna listen to this record over and over and over just to eat up every little detail. I love albums that uh, are hard hitting and they're straightforward, but they're also like an onion. You know, you can really just listen to them again and again and again and peel back another layer continuously. I am really enjoying this record a lot. These guys are easily one of the most versatile bands I've heard this year, uh, one of the best debut records I've heard this year, and I think these guys have a lot of potential too in the future if they were to just clean up their sound a little bit more without compromising the rawness and that great performance, that great tight, in-the-moment performance style that they're bringing to the table. Not as many brittle guitars, vocals that are a little more bright, less shy, are pumped up in the mix just a bit more. I think all of these things could make a night and day difference for Crying's next album, and they aren't even huge changes. And even right now, as is, Crying has a lot going for them. I highly recommend this album, especially with the epic closer on this thing that I will not go into detail with because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. Try it out. Give it a listen. I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this record. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Just leave a mean comment if you're feeling angry. All sorts of links next to my head. Click them. Videos, subscribe, website, and that's it, guys. Forever.